SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, I know a lot of people are excited about standalone 5G networks. Versions of networks that don't rely on LTE for any type of connection. And mostly, that's been led by both DISH with their native 5G network, and then also T-Mobile. And when you get away from LTE, you know, it puts everything on a brand new technology set. And uh, one of the reservations for carriers, legacy carriers, has been voice over LTE and calling performance. They haven't wanted to compromise that and jeopardize that for performance. But we're starting to see even Verizon, who has been very conservative about this, starting to deploy and activate their standalone 5G. Anyways, I want to share this with you guys as a network update. Uh, this is over on X. This was shared from a friend of mine, Nikki T. Shout out to him. Posted a reply to this. And I want to cover it with you guys. Please do like and share this video. Subscribe if you're new here. And turn on the bell notifications icon. To never miss an upload from the SMT. Alright folks, the speed test shows us a lot. 2 gigabits per second on Verizon's N77 C-band layer. I'm not sure how close they were to the cell. I'm assuming pretty close. Those are typical speeds that you would get in a market where Verizon has their one fiber at a multi-gig circuit. So high capacity transport and, uh, and, and at least I'd say 160 megahertz of bandwidth, possibly more. You never know. Uh, but I don't typically see two gigs on something like 140 megahertz, right? So um, looking at some of the details of the connection, you'll see this is a rooted device right no contribution of lte to downlink right so that means 5g is doing all the work okay uh you see uh throughput here coming from n77 100 megahertz n77 60 megahertz so this is a 160 megahertz market that this test was taken from no contribution from band 5 which is LTE, no contribution from band 66 LTE, right? That would have been an additional 30 megahertz of bandwidth uh, not available or being used in this connection. And you see really, really good throughput. So this, uh, again, is a follow-up to a previous video in which we learned that out west, in markets like Oakland, in the southwest, Verizon was deploying standalone 5G. Now, this doesn't mean that all functionality for 5G and R standalone is functional. I think they're very conservative towards the voice over NR thing. It, it, it tends to be troublesome to carriers. We saw it troublesome to T-Mobile. We obviously saw it troublesome to Dish. It took a while for them to really figure things out and then reliably offer voice over NR or vo voice over 5G. So they're, I think, conservative and kind of playing that cautiously. So you're you're probably going to default back to LT for calling and Volti. Uh, but when it comes to connections, we're seeing more and more markets, as long as you've got the device capable of doing standalone 5G, moving in that direction for Verizon as they upgrade and push their network forward in this direction. So it's exciting. I know a lot of people have been asking about it. Uh, this is not a video to say that Verizon is passing T-Mobile in standalone 5G. It's an update video letting you know that there are markets and places where you will see standalone 5g for verizon and they're doing it through their c-band layer next up is to see the aggregation in my opinion next up is to see aggregation between n48 and n77 n48 being band 48 cbrs it's been on lt for a while we expect to see that also in markets where they have n5 we're going to start seeing that in play so we can see a version of this where it's the two carriers of n77 like you see here, the additional low band carrier like N5, probably either, you know, probably like a 10 megahertz channel, right? And then N48, which I guess technically by definition, we could see that. I, I, I'd have to look at the rules and how it can be deployed. LTU is always 10 megahertz sub blocks, and you could see it in, in chunks of 20. Uh, but if that can deepen, right, you add a component carrier of up to you know, 60 or 70 additional megahertz of bandwidth. I'm not sure if they could do 80. I have to look at the rules again, but that's possible. At the very least, it would be an additional 20 megahertz of bandwidth. Most phones 
the modern phones, I think they're doing four component carriers. I forgot if the S24 can do five component carriers of NR5G, but it's something worth investigating, taking a look at, and I think Verizon experiments with that moving through the rest of this year, especially in markets where Verizon has the tight tower grid, right? Where they're going to have confidence in their network, where mid-band channels can be like your anchor channels. That's really what this is about, right? In rural America, where low band is really, really important, it's a different story. In urban America, and even in suburban, your tower handoffs could all be mid-band. Say, for example, like in my market, you know, and a lot of you as well, uh, not not just me, right? Cleveland's not unique. There, There's Vegas. There is, uh, there's, there's cities in Florida and then California where the, the network is very, very dense, right? Tower sites all over the place, including small cells. And of course, they're getting upgraded and constructed all the time. It is a fun time in cellular networking. Really excited about this. Look forward to it. More follow-ups as more information comes out and people share stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. Please do comment on what you're seeing here. Share with us. Let us know what you're seeing in your market if there's anything worth noting and uh, what you've been testing. Uh, please do like, share, and subscribe, and we shall see you all in the next video.